It's a stormy evening at the Stumplex with two sides looking to avoid the dark cloud of defeat once again here in NISA Match Week 2. Hello everyone, welcome to the National Independent Soccer Association on 11 Sports. Alongside Robert Morrison, I'm Sam Goldfarb. Thrilled to bring you the action tonight between Stumptown AC and the expansion club Chicago House AC. Stumptown coming off a really frustrating 3-1 defeat at Chattanooga FC last Saturday. They actually went up 1-0, held the lead for most of the game, and then conceded three goals in the final 15 minutes. And Robert, what adjustments do you think Stumptown needs to make coming into this matchup here tonight against Chicago House? Yeah, it's all about the defense. Uh, we, As you just mentioned, they were able to, to score a, a, a goal early on, and they controlled most of the game uh, last week from a defensive point of view. And then over the last 13 minutes, things just fell apart. Um, got a new center back pairing that uh, wasn't here last season for uh, during the spring spring season, and I think the communication is obviously going to be a big point uh, point of of emphasis for those two uh, going into tonight. And speaking of Chicago House AC and the struggles with Stumptown, Chicago House is a very attack-minded team. They have two fullbacks that like to shoot up and down the field, and Voidcheck Voidcheek, the target man in the center, he's a big piece. And they really imposed that style quite well last Saturday at the league champions. Detroit City FC went up 1-0, fell 3-2 in albeit heartbreaking fashion. The 87th minute and Anthony Manning winner. But they were very competitive and enjoyed bright moments in that game. But Robert, tonight it's a bit of a different story. The conditions are a bit rockier. They're playing a Stumptown team that historically at least has been known for its defense. So how do you think they can translate that as an expansion club coming in to the Stumplex tonight? Yeah, I think uh, in much of the same way as the, the defense for Stumptown is very important for Chicago, it's all about getting on the front foot uh, on the offensive side. Uh, one thing that you could tell from their match against Detroit City is they were way more comfortable when they had the lead, which you know makes reasonable sense, right? <laughs> when you're in control, that's a lot better uh, from that point of view. But um, when they fell behind or when they were in a position where they needed to score a goal to, to take the lead, that was not something that they were very comfortable with. So uh, Stumptown's going to have to watch out for early attacks as uh, Chicago tries to get on the board early um, to, uh, to get out on the front foot. And you may be wondering why this game, perhaps a little delayed, Stumptown in Chicago House actually experienced a lightning delay. There's been thunderstorms in the Mecklenburg County area all week, all day today, specifically, excuse me. But the lineups are set. Uh, kickoff is scheduled for about two to three minutes away. It was 7.08, but now they're trying to line everything back up and set up. But Robert, lineups are as follows. Stumptown playing a 4-2-3-1. Kevin Gonzalez in goal as per usual. Arguably one of the better defenders in, N or better goalkeepers in NISA. The two center backs, Deshaun Nemhard and Nicholas Amposa. Robert Hines and Reese Williams, the fullbacks. The midfield made up of Giovanni Bejarano Navia and Colin Stripling, Luis Garcia Sosa, Travis Ward, and Alex McGrath. And then up top, Agui Chunga. Meanwhile, on the flip side, the same exact Chicago house lineup is trotted out by coach CJ Brown tonight. Mike Novotny in goal, Stefan Mijatovic and Rodolfo Sulia are the center backs. Seoun Kim and Anthony Bowie are the fullbacks. Uh, Michael Kafari, A.R. Smith Jr., Michael Kozielek, Andrew Connor, and Musa Morris are the midfielders. And up top, the lone target man, Wojciech Wojcik. Robert, what are your impressions of these lineups tonight? Um, I think th this will be a very interesting test, as we mentioned, uh, for Stumptown. Uh, one thing that uh, Chicago made a good habit of against Detroit was was using those uh, those fullbacks and their wingers uh, to get up the field and, and to create a lot of problems. Uh, they scored their the opening goal of their existence uh, in in Nisa play um, on a just a killer cross from 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 Morris and uh, the the aforementioned Wojcik uh, scored on a on a great a great goal. Um, so they they have the ability to, to create. It's just going to be a matter of whether or not Stumptown Stumptown can hold up uh, in those situations. And a big notable piece for the Stumptown lineup: the return of Alex McGrath. Yeah, uh, very important. Um, it was um, uh, it was a, a struggle um, without him on, uh, against Chattanooga, uh, and there were times that it was pretty clear that uh, Stumptown wasn't sure. Uh, what to do uh, when they got up uh, into the attacking portion of the field. So I think having him back um, will help uh, in a lot of ways, uh, particularly getting Travis Ward back um, 
as well in terms of just getting him up back up to speed because he he looked like he he was without his his uh his uh, running mate out there and i think it'll be important for him to be for both those guys to be at the top of their game and a big area of the Stumptown attack is predicated on the presence of those three creative players in Luis Garcia Sosa, Travis Ward, and Alex McGrath due to the fact that they really haven't had an elite target man striker over the last two seasons of its, its existence. Yeah, absolutely. Um, goals come from the midfield from this team. I think that's that's pretty clear. Um, and uh, they're going to need to get some, some more help from, from Chunga up top uh, to, to make that happen. And we're set for kickoff and underway here at the Sportsplex at Matthews. Aguichunga is the target man, as Robert alluded to. Perfect timing on that one. And Colin Stripling plays it wide for Robert Hines. And Hines had a tricky go of it last Saturday. Absolutely. He gets, um, uh, he had a rough time with his uh, his uh, guy on the other, on his defensive mark on that side. Um, uh, James Kosick for Chattanooga uh, gave him a, a rough go of it for sure. Stumptown going right to left on your screen, left to right for the team in black, Chicago House AC. Stumptown currently playing around the back with Nemhard and now Reese Williams donning the number six this year. A few squad number changes as well. And Williams battling with Morris. Slithers it over to Ward and gets it back. And now the referee comes back to the earlier violation on Ward. Stumptown, you can see, trying to impose their will and build up more calmly and composed, perhaps, than they did against Chattanooga last weekend. Yeah, that's going to be very important. I think, uh, given the weather and conditions, it's going to be very important um, that they try to maintain control of this ball as much as they can. The ball is going to be slipping around, and, and weird things can happen when the weather is in place, for sure. And we were talking about it in pregame, Robert, and you said despite the fact that Stumptown builds up slowly and relies on so many passes, you actually think they have the advantage due to these weather conditions. Yeah, because they, they also have the ability to, to slow things down if they need to. I think Chicago wants to, to move a little bit more quickly, and they're, they're going to be more dependent on that. And I think that may be something that may be tricky in the weather. The, the rain is certainly impacting things. It's coming down consistently here tonight. We're just lucky we haven't seen lightning at least in the last hour, but I don't want to commentator curse it. <laughs> Garcia Sosa slides it to Stripling, one of the new signings for Stumptown this offseason, and now forward to Chunga. Taking on his defender outside of the boot ball, looking for Garcia Sosa, cleared only as far as Stripling. And now Ward. Travis Ward, one of Stumptown's top contributors last year, finds Williams. And a good job by Sayo in Kim to navigate that one out of trouble. Solid first test passed by Chicago House. Yeah, um, I, I, we were talking about this already. Uh, Travis Ward getting forward uh, was one of, their, one of Stumptown's most dangerous players during that spring season. I think uh, he needs to continue to be that uh, for Stumptown to have success. And despite Chicago House being more of an expansion team, they're very well constructed. Chicago, of course, has plenty of soccer talent. They got the Chicago Fire over there. And actually, S Chicago House now playing in their former stadium, SeatGeek Stadium over there in Chicago. So a really good foundation for this new club, Tanisa. Yeah, I think it'll be uh, it's a good opportunity for the city of Chicago to get some more more soccer. I know they they, they love their fire down there, so. It's a big good opportunity for them to have another another team out there. A fiery fan base. They'll hope to translate it over to Chicago House and make the new club feel at home. I had to. Yeah. Connor in the center of midfield, the captain. And it's played backwards. It looks like at the moment, Robert, they're trotting with three at the back, but it's very fluid. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you could see that from, from their last game. Um, there is some fluidity with, especially on this side as we're watching closest to us, uh, Kim and Morris seem to have uh, the opportunity to kind of switch spots even to a certain extent. So it'll be very interesting to watch that throughout tonight. Stripling looks to attack through Hines on the right side. Robert Hines to the back stick looking for Ward. His header flies into the gloves of Mike Novotny. Mike Novotny the goalkeeper for Chicago House actually saved a penalty against Detroit City FC shortly before Wojciech Wojciech scored the opener. Novotny, an experienced goalkeeper despite just being 25 years of age. He's played in the Swedish third tier as well as the USL Championship with Hartford Athletic. First 
Test facing Stump Town, and it looks like Nemhard will knock it out of play for the time being. And now Kim. Enticing ball cleared by Hines. And Garcia Sosa strolls onto it and evades the pressure from Kafari. And Robert, you have to be pleased with these opening five minutes if you're Stumptown. Of course, nothing really drastic created, but they've had more of the ball, and we talked about how they looked more comfortable on it, even from the jump. Yeah, I think uh, they possession is going to be key for them. And again, not to, to reiterate this too much, but the with under the weather circumstances, the ability to possess the ball the, will be really helpful tonight. And you mentioned there's so much attacking talent. There's a bevy of it on the Chicago house side. But how much are they going to add defensively in the press? We've seen Stumptown is at its weakest when teams can effectively press them. They've even had to adapt their formation and tactics in the past because of it. But it doesn't look like we're seeing something very aggressive from that front line of Chicago House just yet. No, I think they're they're a lot more comfortable just letting the play come to them for sure. Um, uh, so I, I, I'm not sure pressure until they put they've put they put themselves in a situation where where they're in the lead then you see more pressure from them at least based on on the one game of uh, cir uh circumstances that we have from them Williams drills it ahead for Agui Chunga trying to play target man and commits the foul as he taps it back to Ward Seo and Kim involved once again on the action and he's a firecracker for this Chicago house side Robert we were talking about it in pregame <laughs> yeah definitely um got himself a, a yellow card uh against uh, Detroit City for scuffing up the penalty spot before one of Detroit City's penalties um and just uh you know he, he's he's trying to to create a little uh, little mischief out there probably getting ahead of of the of the def of his opponents and Kim has Nisa experience to his name, actually played with Oakland Roots SC in the 2020 fall campaign. He was actually on the all-tournament first team back then. He returns to Nisa once again this fall. Feels like everybody's played for Oakland Roots at some point. I, I hear that a lot, you know. Oakland Roots, of course, now in the USL Championship, if I'm not mistaken, but were once a prominent fixture of Nisa in its early days. Kim once again here on the right-hand side finds Michael Kafari, another experienced Nisa player, has long time most recently with New Amsterdam and Detroit City. And Musa Morris wins a throw for the visitors. Seven minutes gone. It's nil-nil if you're just tuning in. Welcome to the Stumpplex and the 11 Sports Network. Sam Goldfarb and Robert Morrison on hand bringing you the action between Stumptown AC and Chicago House AC. A pair of clubs looking to bag their first points and actually making up the bottom two spots in the Nisa standings, albeit early days. Yeah, you know, one, one game in. Certainly you don't want to be at the bottom at any particular point in the table, but uh, nothing to stress about. It's a long season, um, so opportunities for both clubs to, to make up points tonight. And, of course, Nisa expanding its fall season to 18 matches. It's uh, more than about 10 more games than they played in the spring. Of course, Chicago House, the expansion club, bringing the total te number of teams in Nisa to 10. It's Travis Ward plays the ball ahead for Williams. Reese Williams, of course, involved with the attack that led to that Luis Garcia Sosa goal in the 19th minute on Saturday. He whipped in the initial cross that led to the head-on from Chunga. And Bejarano Navia in holding midfield, winning the throw. Another point of note with Stumptown tweaking its lineup, we saw Jacob Krim and Frankie Martinez feature prominently last spring. And for the second straight game, Neither of them featuring in the starting 11, and Krim not even on the bench. Yeah, it is interesting. Uh, you would have thought that given the small amount of space... Oh, hold on. McGrath picks up the interception and winning a free kick for Stumptown. We'll see if they play this quickly or launch one in the box, and it looks like they'll opt for the latter. Yeah, um, but anyway, see, the, the new center back pairing is interesting, and we, we talked about this already, the the communication that between them is going to be super important for them to continue um, with the defensive record that they had in the spring. Uh, you do wonder if something's going on with the two, with uh, Krim and Frankie Martinez not able to, to start, but um, it could also just be an opportunity for these two uh, to develop. Ball played ahead for Wojcik. Takes a long-range effort. Can't quite test Gonzalez on that one. 
And we talked about Wojciech Wojcik a little bit in the open. He's a Polish-American striker. He's got experience throughout the globe. Of course, most recently played for forward Madison SC. Before that was the leading goal scorer in the 2019 season for Hartford Athletic. Had seven goals. And it was the inaugural campaign, I believe, actually scored a crucial goal in the opening match at Dillon Stadium two years ago as Ward cuts down the left flank. Had a bit of a quiet night last Saturday, but has been far more lively here today. Yeah, you like to see that from him. That This is more the player that, that Stumptown got last year um, in the spring season, I think. Uh, again, uh, Travis Ward being at the top of his game is, is super important for, for Stumptown. Ward with two goals and three assists to his name last spring. He actually enjoyed a four-game stretch in the middle of that campaign where he had one goal and three assists in four matches. That's good. That's what you want. Scoring goals. Like we talked about, this is a, a midfield goal-driven uh, team based on their, their squad. Um, and so Ward and McGrath are super important in that regard. Absolutely. When they have the three of those in that base of attacking midfield, it's really crucial for them, especially now lacking a true target man up front. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Shunga is going to provide a, a, a swifter, smaller kind of a kind of guy. He's not the, the target man up front that you would, would think of as a, as a true striker. Um, not that he can't provide something, but just that he's he's going to provide something different than uh, what a bigger, um, stronger target man might provide. Williams cannoning down the left wins a throw for Stumptown. And on that note also, Stumptown let multiple kind of big target men strikers walk this offseason in Carpe, in Cassanio Hall, and also Giovanni ramos Godoy. Now, none of them were big in the goals. I believe two combined goals between the three of them. But in terms of allowing runners in like McGrath and Ward and Garcia Sosa to kind of kind of launch off them, it's an interesting change in style. Yeah, it, it definitely brings uh, less for the center backs to be concerned with because you don't have both of them uh, concerned with that, that big target guy. Um, but that doesn't mean that it can't work. It just may be an adjustment, as you noted. Morris hits that ahead to Wojcik. Now Michael Kozielik, a big number eight, one of the initial signings for this Chicago House Club. Kozielik signed for the house after a year and a half spent as a free agent. He's played in Sweden, Austria, and Finland. He was the 2019 Sporting Christina Player of the Year. Mm. I don't know what that means, but it sounds impressive, I gotta say. <laughs> it was a Finnish club. Oh, nice. Uh, to my knowledge, and he, I guess, was voted best player that nice, year. Nice, nice. Well, I understood that part. Yes, it was the yes, first part that was yes, confusing. Just, to, just for the record, yes, I know what yes. player of the year means. <laughs> our, our, our analyst does know what player of the year is. <laughs> uh, Wojcik looking back and House a bit sloppy with it. Now Chunga. McGrath puts on the trickery and Stumptown will build once again. They've tweaked their formation a bit once again. Colin Stripling and Giovanni, Giovanni Bejrano Navia are now a double holding mid block right in the center of the park. Both are very aware. Bejrano Navia a bit more physical, but Stripling very good with his positioning. Yeah, and you got to wonder if the defensive uh, deficiencies of the first match have something to do with the, with the choice to, to have a little bit more cover back there. And Stumptown winning a corner. It certainly worked. They've won the ball back a lot more. And, of course, you mentioned the conditions and that harming house's style. But they haven't been able to get up and down the wings as much as they've wanted to here in these opening 15. A corner on the way. It looks to be Garcia Sosa standing over it. It's headed towards the center. Williams can't quite get on the end of it. McGrath's follow-up effort is blocked by Kafari. And now Chunga. Leaves it a bit exposed, and now Williams kind of rolls to Novotny without trouble. Yeah, I think uh, if you're Williams in that particular case, you want to try to get that off the ground. Uh, the weather, again, and we're, we're going to talk about this a lot, uh, suggests that the goalkeepers might have a hard time holding on to the ball. So you, if you can put a little more power behind that, um, you're going to put that in a situation where you're going to force the, the keeper to, to make a little bit more of a, an effort play, um, in which case you, know, you never know what the ball is going to do at that particular point. It looks like Chicago House once again flexing into a back four. They do this a lot. They run their fullbacks all over the field. Sometimes Kafari will play holding mid. Sometimes they'll even drop back. 
And it's what you have to do when you're Chicago House. Defensively, there are deficiencies, as we've talked about. Did concede three at the weekend, even if it is Detroit City. It's still three goals allowed. And they only have four listed defenders on the roster. One of those in Kafari, more of a defensive mid. Yeah, and you're gonna have to. They're gonna have to watch out for for being picked on um, in those situations. So that might be something that Sumtown can take advantage of. We'll have to see if uh, Travis Ward and and McGrath on the other side can can take advantage of those deficiencies. We've seen the likes of McGrath, Ward, and Williams challenge those defenders on the flanks, as Musa Morris tries to slither out of trouble here and does quite admirably. And now Andrew Connor scored the equalizer oh, that was a in Detroit. <laughs> Yeah, as you mentioned, phenomenal challenge from Bejarano Navia. Stripling carrying it forward over to Robert Hines, now in the number 33 kit. Stumptown once again imposing their style. The house have hardly really been able to play out of their own half. And you have to figure, this is what head coach Rod Underwood likes to see. Last game a bit more frustrating tonight. They've had almost all the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if they've hit 70%-ish possession-wise already. Yeah, I think the control is, is very important. And and we can't understate the importance of having uh, McGrath back. We've talked about it a, a, a couple times already. But um, I think the combination of having Alex McGrath back, allowing those two midfielders to, to really help with the defense, um, because McGrath makes up for, for other uh, missing pieces that you might have. He, he just has a lot of skill out there. Um, so I think that is, is it, it feels a little bit more comfortable out there for the for the whole squad. They are certainly stroking it around more comfortably, but Morris battles with it from Strick, Stripling and an uh, understanding yellow card <laughs> as Stripling grabs him from behind and yeah. rips him down. Yeah, he knew what he was doing there. I uh, have no doubt. Professional challenge, we Abs say in the business. Absolutely. That is a please don't score a, a, a breakaway goal on me. It did appear Morris certainly had the step on him. And Musa Morris, a very threatening player. He plays all over the shop, but listed as a forward. 5'8", 150 out of Liberty. He scored multiple game winners three last spring at Liberty, including at my beloved Davidson Wildcats. <laughs> you're, not, you're not bitter about that, are you, Sam? It, it, was, it was an early goal. It was an <laughs> early goal. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Building from the back once again are the house. And Kim. Kim, actually more of a true fullback. They have a converted fullback in Anthony Bowie on the left. We haven't seen them run through him as much, despite Bowie perhaps being more attack-minded. But Kim, known for his ability to get forward on that right flank, he had four goals and seven assists in his college career, playing for UCSB and Duke. So some good pedigree in the men's D1 soccer world for the right back. Looking for Chunga, the flags up on the far side. Yeah, that was uh, almost a good build, almost good build up there, and Chunga couldn't quite get himself back on side before the ball was played. Um, not much to be done there as things happen. An interesting story, Robert, behind Chicago House AC. Obviously, an expansion club. They're run by head coach C.J. Brown. Of course, a very accomplished MLS coach, one of the Chicago Fire legends. He's won four Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cups. He won the 1998 MLS Cup, which came in his rookie season. And he also received 15 senior level caps with the U.S. Men's National Team from 1998 to 2003. And Robert, I'd assume that as a player, especially on an expansion club, having that much actual playing experience on the touchline really helps. I, I imagine it can't hurt for sure, just knowing that that the the sense of what the team is going to look like and, and play like is going to be really clear because of the amount of experience that, that he has. Bejarano Navia looking long for Chunga. And we saw some of those tactics in effect last weekend against Detroit. Haven't quite translated here just yet. We did say it was going to be difficult. We're not going to belabor the weather too much, but that's certainly, I don't want to say an excuse, but a factor sure. at play. Sure, it slows uh, Chicago down without a doubt. Um, they're not able to get up the up the pitch as quickly as they would want to, um, which puts them in a, in a negative position for sure. And you wonder how that affects a guy like Musa Morris, who's so predicated on breaking quickly like we see here. Surging past Reese Williams. Gets onto his right, and a good recovery by Williams to deflect it back for a corner. 
Absolutely. I didn't see how he broke away like that, but he was... Uh, oh, here we go. We're going to get a little bit of this. It's a good, a good recovery by Williams, as you mentioned, but uh, Morris was out there all by himself. I'm not really sure what the breakdown was on that end. Looked like maybe Williams switched off and the ball just got played cross field. Regardless, a corner coming for House. Their first of the night. Still nil-nil here in the 19th minute, but looking to change that right now. Taken short to Connor. McGrath clears it only as far as Bowie. And now Morris trying to take on McGrath and wins a corner. Back got, exactly where they started. <laughs> Here we go. Um, I was going to say we've seen uh, Ward and McGrath have the ability to switch sides, and I don't know if that was just because of the corner situation, but uh, it's good to have the, the flexibility of those, of those players. And, of course, the big thing being Ward's listed as a defender. Obviously, he doesn't play like one, but he tracks back like one. McGrath, there were more problems with that. He didn't track as much last year. This year, we're seeing him getting back a bit more. Obviously, his season has only lasted 18 <laughs> minutes. And it looks like some commotion at the moment. Play being stopped. And I think they're just worrying about the clock. It was not running. Corner taken to the back post. Looks for void cheek, but uh, appears he was went offside. The, went over the top of the of the goal, I think. The clock still frozen here at the Stumplex. <laughs> we I, do not know how many minutes the game has been going on, is what I, we're trying to say. I believe it's around 19, 19 and a <laughs> half. But at the moment... Our clock is frozen, so we will just Six improvise. Suspension of time. Williams, the link with Giovanni Bejarano Navia is a bit loose. And now a two-footed challenge from the back. Looks like that was Amposa. Yeah, that was uh, not the prettiest tackle ever um, and pretty awkward. Um, we got a Chicago house player down. I believe Morris? it's Musa Morris. Oh, no, it's not. Morris is over there on the A.R. Smith Jr. Yeah. More of an attack-minded piece in this midfield, playing left wing tonight. The Butler grad. He spent time in the Fire Academy and also with the U-19 side. And it appears he's going to need to get tended to as the clock resumes at 22:19. Certainly hope Smith is okay. The Chicago native... Played 65 minutes last weekend. The well, trainers attending the Smith got to hope he's okay. That was a, a very awkward uh, challenge on 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 uh, the part of uh, Amposa. And you have to figure he thought he was going for the ball there, but at, with such an unfortunate se sequence of events, he's got to be fortunate to get off without a yellow. Yeah, uh, very interesting. And it, it, you got to wonder if if the referee is taking the conditions into account. I don't know how how the the field's holding up. Um, looks pretty well, pretty like it's doing pretty well, but you know a couple of divots out there, and uh, imagine that will uh, hopefully not be a problem as we continue. It looks like. Smith is back to his feet and all right, so we are glad to see that. And a free kick coming in a somewhat intriguing position. Sayo in Kim and Michael Kozielek standing over it for Chicago House. Still nil-nil here as we enter the 24th. Kozielek hits the curler and a good diving stop from Kevin Gonzalez. One of the better, more sure-handed keepers in Nisa comes to play once again. That's a, a good ball. That's right where you want it to go. Um, but uh, Gonzalez had it covered on that side. Um, good effort there from uh, Koziela. He got it through the wall, past the wall, and uh, almost, uh, almost scored there. And a corner coming for House. Williams gets ahead to it, and we'll go back to the corner once again. 
Stumptown fans turning out a bit more as the rain calms down. Stumptown really done a great job marketing this new club, and it's become one of the bitter attractions in the Charlotte area as Connor blasts that one high and wide. Almost a souvenir for the Canopy Club. Canopy Club, of course, also selling Noda Beer, Noda Brewing Company. I'm in favor, just for the record of that. But I hope they're, in, I hope they're enjoying their time. Yes, it's certainly a good spot up there for all of the fans for a pretty good price for a VIP experience. Kevin Gonzalez set to take the goal kick. Gonzalez allowed three goals past him for the first time in his stump down career last weekend. But you can't really say fault him too much. The only real goal that you could argue maybe had a chance at was the second. But when a guy shoots it from two feet and you get a hand on it, it's, still, it's hard enough to get the power to keep it out. Voitchik looks down the line for Connor, tries to slide and loses it out of play for a Stumptown throw. They're trying to play it into the target man a bit more, but haven't been able to quite establish things ball movement wise. And that's perhaps where we say playing a bit too quick for the conditions. Throw for Garcia Sosa. Kafari wins the ball and a free kick. Oh, we got, we got the drums going over here, Sam. The, the fans are really kicking it into gear here at the Stumplex. Like to see it. Yeah, you don't, you know, the camera isn't pointed at them, um, but they are on our side closer to sh st the goal Stumptown's attacking. Can't tell if those are bongos or those are proper drums. Either way, they sound great. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, speaking of uh, the side that Stumptown's attacking, uh, haven't, haven't seen this side in a while. Uh, Chicago's had a good run of, uh, of possession, good spell of possession, and uh, uh, Stumptown's going to need to get control of the ball as they had for the, the first part of the game. And do you think it's the fact that they're maybe closing down uh, Stumptown midfielders a bit more, or what's the adjustment you're seeing? Um, I, I think they've, they're have they realizing the, the possession is important, and so they're pressuring a little bit harder, a little higher than they were um, uh, from Chicago's point of view, rather, and so they were able to control that, that run of uh, possession there. And have won a few fouls in the process, it seems. But overall, a good recovery by Chicago House after maybe s being a bit sluggish the first 15. Right. You, I mean, you don't know what to, to expect when you're the, the away squad and you're coming into a, a, a place you've never played and the conditions aren't great. Uh oh Ball one back, headed for Travis Ward. Diving stop from Novotny without too much trouble. Yeah, little, another roller there. And uh, again, you'd like to see Ward get a little... Uh, height on that ball to to trouble the goalkeeper a little bit um, just to see if, if if he's got those sure hands uh, one thing I did notice with Navani in the the Detroit City game is he makes uh, quick decisions but his technique sometimes lets him down and he's not able to to make as as many sure-handed saves and, and uh, punches as he'd like uh, which can put the his uh, his team in in not the greatest of positions all the time so something to watch out for and Novotny still acclimating to a starting role, most recently playing with Hartford Athletic as a backup goalkeeper. Did not make any appearances in 2019, only played twice in 2020. Travis Ward has been very involved here in the first half, despite having a more quiet affair last weekend. But that ball's intercepted and played long for Kozielek. And now Wojcik holding up play for a brief moment, and waiting for numbers to arrive. Now drilled wide for Seo in Kim from Songnam, South Korea, originally. Morris, cross to the back post, looking for Smith. Couldn't quite get ahead on it. Yeah, Morris is a dangerous one with the ball at his feet, as we saw with the opening goal uh, last week for Chicago House. Uh, you do not want to give him that kind of space because he can he can make an accurate cross and, and there's going to be trouble for Stumptown. And you alluded to the cross he pulled off on the opener played that ball from 40 yards it was absolutely ridiculous yeah it was it was a fantastic ball and the the recovery by Wojcik um Wojcik it's easy for me to say um to 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 control the ball and and make a a, a nice effort on goal uh, to score was was excellent as well yeah d timed his back shoulder run very well Robert free kick coming here for Stumptown what have you seen from Robert Heinz tonight? Because in the open, we talked about how James Kasat kind of had his way with him last week. 
Yeah, they, there hasn't been too much pressure on him. Uh, Bowie has not given him really any kind of trouble to, to work with. And um, it looks like Smith Smith is on that side as well, and he hasn't really – they don't seem to be that interested in working the ball down that side of the field, um, which <laughs> Robert Hines may be A-OK -okay with uh, uh, based on how last week went. But uh, they are definitely more concerned with this near side of, of the pitch than they are on the far side from where we're sitting. And, of course, Musa Morris lined up on the right. But Reese Williams is a very solid fullback for the Stumptown team and was a bit more surefire at least last weekend. Robert Hines more used to playing maybe outside center back and has been converted into a fullback. Reese Williams is a fullback and wingback by trade, it seems. Yeah, he's, he's certainly more comfortable, and I think the matchup uh, certainly fits uh, for Reese Williams more than it does for, uh, for Robert Hines did last week. Uh, against Chattanooga. They were looking for Chunga, and it was cleared by Mijatovic. Playing at the moment, left center back. A bit of an even back and forth affair here in the opening 30 minutes, but still no goals and no real clear-cut chances aside from the free kick that Kevin Gonzalez saved. Stumptown slowly reestablishing its build-up here and looking more composed in possession as... The press wanes a little from House. And now McGrath slides it over to Garcia Sosa. He's been far more involved the last 10 minutes. Can't quite find Chunga on the other end of that ball. Novotny, a lot of these long goal kicks. Yeah. Um, I mean, and sometimes sort of forcing that by by not dropping back on in the defense. They, they're they forcing Chicago to, to, to make longer uh, goal kicks if they want to actually get the ball into their into their side. Stumptown looking to launch another attack through Stripling. A good long ball played for Ward. Reese Williams on the overlap. He'll deny him the ball and cut inside. Travis Ward, two goals, three assists last year. Leading assist man and joint second goal scorer. Can't quite find any space around Kim. Voidcheek pressing and a throw coming for Stumptown. Stumptown, of course, glad to have that midfield attacking midfield trio of Travis Ward, Luis Garcia Sosa, and Alex McGrath back. McGrath was out, did not even make the bench. I believe he was dealing with a little knock against Chattanooga last weekend. And Luis Garcia Sosa, after scoring the opener on a terrific half volley, had to leave the game in the 48th with a knock. So I'm sure if you're Stumptown, you're just happy to see all three of them back and making an impact here in the first half. Williams can't quite drill it past Sulia. And now Smith can't quite surge past Stripling. And now Hines to Garcia Sosa in space. Might have been caught between two minds, and Novotny claims without trouble. Two names we haven't said much tonight. The center back pairing of Sulia and Mijatovic. Of course, they were more of a factor on both ends last game. Got caught out a bit on those corners that led to the two goals for Detroit City from open play. Yeah, I would always uh, make the case that if you're not mentioning the, the names of the defenders, that's probably a good thing because um, that means they're they're not getting involved for whatever reason, either good or bad. Um, and that's true on, on both ends, really, other than the uh, uh, opponent's uh, error there the foul in on Stumptown side there hasn't been much from the defenders on either way Garcia Sosa threads it ahead to Chunga Agui Chunga now cuts on to his right low cross rolls into Novotny's gloves Stumptown just lacking that final ball at the moment yeah they need to to make an effort to to figure out what to do about this and 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 you got to wonder if it has something to do with with the lack of a target man uh, Chunga definitely plays a little bit more like like a midfielder or a winger uh, who's being forced to, to be put in a situation that he's maybe not the most comfortable with. And this fits into Coach Rod Underwood's 4-2 freedom type structure that a lot of people have been talking about in the Nisa media of late. He basically likes to throw about four attack-minded players in attacking mid and striker and just let them kind of move around. And we saw the ultimate expression of that last Saturday with Longo up top and Chunga in right attacking mid, and they were just flip-flopping. But you have to wonder the sacrifice that comes with that, as Robert alluded to.
ball played over to Reese Williams down the line. Morris tracking back, and now Ward. Tries to get to the touch line, and Kim two foots that challenge well out for what looks to be perhaps a Stumptown corner to the chagrin of Andrew Connor. Yeah, it was a, a good move. The uh, the Stumptown fans really over here on this side really enjoyed the, uh, the couple of step over uh, fake moves that Ward made before he actually uh, put the move on. And when you're playing right in front of the fans, it's got to energize you to be, perhaps be a little more audacious with your dribble moves. As there are two standing over this Stumptown corner at the moment, Travis Ward looks to deal the in-swinger. Headed towards the back stick. Looked like McGrath got ahead on it. And it's just going to roll out of play harmlessly. It's a pretty good ball. I, I think that was McGrath, actually, that, that took the... The, uh, the corner, actually, it was Ward that was on the inside. Um, but that was a, a good corner in a good spot. Um, just couldn't quite get it on target. Makes a bit more sense. Ward's a little taller. <laughs> a little bit. And now Sulia building from the back with Kim. Wojcik and Connor in the mix here. And another throw for Stumptown. So this game's come and gone in waves. You see the first 15 goes Stumptown's way. Round number two, maybe Chicago's way, but it's it's kind of, the pendulum's kind of shifting back. Yeah, they some uh, both teams seem, seem to be wanting to figure each other out and quite haven't quite figured it out yet um, on either end. Um, I would say Stumptown's had a little bit more success in terms of like creating uh, near chances or half chances, if you will, but uh, nothing too terrifying to where you're like, oh, that was an, a, an almost goal kind of situation. Uh, except for the, the free kick from, from Chicago uh, what, about 20 minutes ago. And that's the problem Stumptown sometimes plays itself into a little bit. They're so good at creating, but we talk about where does the finishing come from when you have these three guys in Garcia, Sosa, Ward, and McGrath, you can hope that maybe that link up materializes a bit more. You'd hope so. And uh, the nice thing as well is that Reese Williams likes to get into the attack uh, as well, which is, is another piece of that puzzle. Um, you don't see, very similar to, to what Chicago House has, has got going on, you don't see Robert Hines really getting into the 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 offense as much. Oh. Speaking of Reese Williams, that was an incredible spell there. <laughs> it was. How many people did he fake out? Was it two I, or three? I, I think he beat two black shirts and then got knocked it ahead FIFA style and drew the yellow. Yeah, he did. Excellent move there by Reese Williams. And that, that is a, a, a vital piece of the attack. Uh, for Stumptown, if they can get him into the mix uh, and, and allow Travis Ward to get a little bit more central, which you see that he definitely does when he gets the ball, he has a tendency to want to cut into the inside. Um, I would imagine that's a, just a, wanted to get the ball on his on his uh, on his uh, preferred foot. Um, but that is an opportunity uh, with Reese Williams and Travis Ward playing on this side. You can get them both involved on, on their comfortable positions. Teams are always at their best in a 4-2-3-1 when the winger and the fullback are on the same wavelength. You see that very well with Warden Williams at the moment. And the yellow going to Rodolfo Sulia, one of the center backs for Chicago House AC. Right now, Ward and Garcia Sosa standing over the free kick here on the near side. That one didn't find any heads. It I don't know to the back what, I'm sure what was happening there. Um, I was I was about to say before they took the kick, and so there didn't seem to be a lot of target opportunities in the box. They were severely outnumbered, so I'm not really sure what that play was going to be. Um, because even if he had if he had gotten a a ball in the box uh, near the goal, I I don't know that they would have had the numbers to to really challenge for it. Perhaps a training ground routine that didn't quite come off. Yeah, not not even remotely close. No. Mijatovic looking to build up. He won silver in the 2012 AU Taekwondo Championships. Random fact. <laughs> I, I love a good random fact. I would imagine that the some of the skills would, would come into play here. And now Chunga. Linking quickly with Williams and receives it back on the touchline. Looking into the box, Mijatovic heads it out of danger, but only as far as Bejarano Navia. Ejerano Navia, no goals in his career, more of a defensive midfield, defensive player. But we'd love to see him have a dig. 
Instead, Stumptown gonna opt to build up more calmly. Chunga looking for Williams down the touchline once again. They're attacking heavily down that left flank. And again, recycled by Chunga. Now knocked over, perhaps went a bit uh, down a bit soft for the ref's <laughs> liking. And Wojcik loses out once again. Stumptown in full control these last five but still just looking for that breakthrough. You've seen so much success down that left flank right around the touchline the last two minutes alone. And, I mean, star performer, Robert, we'd have to talk about Reese Williams. Yeah, he's been fantastic, um, creating a lot of, of trouble for, for Chicago. Again, we're belaboring this. We're hitting it over and over and over again. But who is going to be that person that's, that's going to be a target for, for Reese Williams? You can tell he wants to get it out onto the, into the wing and, and make a cross, but but to who is, is the real big question. He's linked up well with Ward, as we talk about, and also Chunga. But again, it's the final ball, and that's ultimately going to be the conversation Stumptown has all year. They're going to look pretty with it in numerous games. The question is, who has the cutting edge? Last season, it was McGrath, Ward, and Garcia Sosa. Can those three rediscover that? Or will there be a fourth guy that emerges? And that's the question we're going to talk about all year. Yeah, I mean, until they, they figure out specifically what the answer to that question is, you got to keep talking about it, right? They signed one striker this offseason. It was Teddy Forson who made the bench tonight. Forson, though, doesn't have the structure of a super tall target man. He's only 5'9", and uh, wasn't known as the biggest goal scorer at Iona, but very quick and maybe adds a different dimension. But it seems Underwood prefers Chunga. And I'd say today, to be fair, he's really um, rewarded that investment. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's done well. He's, it's just a, it, clearly it's a different plan um, than, than the sort of standard uh, number nine role that you would usually think of somebody with an aerial threat, something along those lines. Um, it's it's I mean, I mean, if you think about it to a certain extent, Chunga and Garcia Sosa could could be uh, switched out. And maybe there's some element of that. You talked about the, the four two freedom. Is that, is that yes, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, that element of it as well? So the ability for them to kind of switch spots if they need to be. Um, it's a different methodology and it doesn't mean that it can't work. It's just um, figuring out how to make sure that everybody's on board with that is, is going to be key. Williams corralling the long ball. Had a pretty nice-looking cross moments ago. Wind up in the hands of Novotny, whose instincts, I'd say, have been good today, have been sound, but he hasn't really been tested just yet. No, a lot of slow rolling shots and, and a couple of, of uh, crosses, but that's really the first one he's got his hands on tonight. Stripling picked up a yellow about half an hour ago. Over to Hines. And the throw coming for House. And Chicago House with their inaugural home match next weekend. They're playing at SeatGeek Stadium for the first time all year against New Amsterdam FC. And a winnable match at that, but they obviously have their eyes set on this one. A competitive nil-nil that is maybe seesawing a little out of their favor at the moment. As Kim looking for Connor. Those two haven't quite been able to link up to their liking. And now over to Ward. Stumptown switching the field to play once again through Hines. Now Ward roaming to the right. He's been all over the pitch tonight, but loses out to Kozielek. Underweighted the pass a little. We enter the 43rd minute here at the Sportsplex at Matthews. Here on the 11 Sports Network, Sam Goldfarb, Robert Morrison. It's nil-nil at the moment. Stumptown has had the upper hand for, I'd say, the bulk of it. But Chicago House has had their moments and perhaps the most dangerous chance of the match. Yeah, absolutely. Their possession has not been uh, a strong part of their game, but we we didn't really expect that coming in, and the the wet field and and wet ball and all the other things that are that are uh, factoring in as well would would have some impact on that. But at the same time, they've had they've probably been the closest to scoring of either of the two teams. We talked about we had a lightning delay that postponed the match by about ten minutes. In in all honesty. We're perhaps a bit lucky it was only 10. The rain clearing up a little as we speak as that long ball rolls its way to Gonzalez. Made a really impressive save on the free kick. Dove down to his left to bat that one back for a corner. And the one attacking stat 
you'd feel Chicago House probably has an advantage is, is the corners because every time they create a chance, they draw two, three. They just haven't been able to break through. Yeah, they're coming in bunches when they've when they've had them, and uh, Stumptown only a I think at two or three uh, corners, but they're definitely leading in the in the shots category, um, and the the shots on goal as well. Garcia Sosa linking with Chunga and winning a free kick in the attacking half. That looked uncomfortable. It did, and it's taken quickly. Stumptown just looking to catch the visitors out before the break. Chunga knocks it along to Hines. And it looks like he was offside as the fourth official raises his flag. Yeah, that's that's got to be a little bit of an inexper inexperience of, uh, as, a, as a fullback, as we've talked about with Robert Hines. Um, generally, center back's not terribly concerned with the offsides flag uh, from where they're playing. Yeah, that's about the furthest forward we've probably seen him throughout his Stumptown career. And with Williams being so attack-minded, it's a real luxury that you can have your right back in Hines bomb further forward without worrying about the consequences because Chicago House hasn't quite been able to counter to the degree they want. That ball played long for Wojcik. Can't quite connect with Kozielek. And Stumptown on the ball once again. Colin Stripling. Outside of the yellow, a pretty quiet half, but I'd say he's been quietly impactful. Yeah, he's doing his job. Um, I mean, other than, as you noted, the, the yellow card where he, he got caught out on a, on a bad uh, ball on it that he sort of created, um, he's done well. McGrath looking down the line for Williams, once again surging to the touchline. That cross more enticing, finds its way to Colin Stripling, and the shot is blocked. So just as we say that, Stripling getting forward on the end of the cross, just couldn't quite get it out of the diving reach of Mijatovic. And now Wojcik navigating the pressure well, and Morris trying to find some space. That was a good build-up play from uh, Stumptown there. You wonder if Stripling took just a tick too long to think about that shot. Um, it looks like he had it a little bit more open um, in, in the immediate when the ball kind of came to him. He, he took a, a, an extra touch or two, and it probably allowed the defender to, to make up some ground on him. And a very good split-second recovery by the visitors to prevent that one from testing Novotny who's been unchallenged all day despite being very involved. Long ball, diving header from Mijatovic finds its way to Morris and surges past Williams, now dealing with Chunga. Throw coming for Chicago House as we enter added time here in the first half, still nil-nil. Fourth official has not quite shown the amount of added time we'll have as Kozielek finds the ball over to Morris. It appears our clock and the ref's clock is a bit off, but that's going to do it for the first half. Stumptown AC and Chicago House AC level at the break. Stumptown enjoying more of the ball, more of the chances, but Chicago House with the biggest chance from a free kick around the 20th minute mark. Robert, any observations before we head to a quick break? Yeah, I think uh, the players will uh, like to be able to get inside and uh, hopefully dry off a little bit. Um, it hasn't looked too terribly wet out there. I know we've talked about the, the weather a lot, but it, it doesn't seem to have impacted the the game too terribly much, maybe lightened up some of the shots uh, and the attempts a little bit. But um, I think both teams will be uh, content to, to continue doing what they're doing, especially from Stumptown's point of view, because you have to think if they continue to create opportunities, um, at some point there there's going to be a good chance for them to, to actually get one in the back of the net. Stumptown AC and Chicago House AC level at the break. We'll be back after a short timeout ourselves. It's the National Independent Soccer Association on 11 Sports.
Welcome back to the National Independent Soccer Association on 11 Sports. Sam Goldfarb, Robert Morrison on hand to bring you the action. Stumptown AC and Chicago House AC level at nil-nil at the break. Stumptown with the bulk of possession created the bulk of chances, but Chicago House with by far the scariest chance in the free kick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think uh, that has got to be a concerning uh, piece for Stumptown about what Chicago had that opportunity to get. But they handled it. They handled it well. I mean, it was a great save by Gonzalez. Um, and really, you just have to be more aware of, of your surroundings and, and not allow them uh, those kind of opportunities moving forward for, for from Stumptown's perspective. And we touched on it throughout the first half, but Stumptown was by far more, I'd say, had more initiative, created more chances, but couldn't quite find that final ball. Chungo, Williams, Ward, they all linked up well, and McGrath had his moments too, but nobody really broke through there. So, Robert, what adjustments does Stumptown need to make, or personnel adjustments do you think Rod Underwood might have to look at? Yeah, I mean, we've talked about the lack of uh, sort of target men at the, at the number nine position, um, and so I think... Uh, barring somebody coming off the bench that we're not aware of um, to, to take over that slot, which I'm, I'm pretty sure is not allowed. Um, <laughs> they are going to have to find ways to just take the advantage of the opportunities a little bit better. And, and just it's better shots, really. I think that's the bigger thing. Um, they're going to use the they have the personnel that they have. Um, and it doesn't look like there's reinforcements that are going to change the way that they're playing. So it's just about making sure that when those opportunities come that you, you, you take, take your time, take better shots, um, really try to, to put the, the goalkeeper into in trouble. And I think that will help a lot. And Chicago House, as we talked about, more predicated on attacking down the wings. And they tried to do that through Seo and Kim, who's perhaps more experienced at that but they never really attacked down the opposite flank where Robert Hines struggled last week. Yeah, absolutely. They've, they've let, um, they've left Hines alone. He's hasn't really had a whole lot to do. He's been able to kind of get forward without much problem. And, uh, that is something that's that, that maybe Chicago might want to pay attention to, uh, the fact that he, he struggled with pace, um, of, uh, <coughs> last week and, and maybe something that they want to try to attack. But, uh, um, as it looks like, uh, as we're getting started, Morris is actually on this side uh, closest to to Robert Hines. So maybe that's that's something that's going to come into play. And that was the point I was just about to ask you about. Do they flop wings? Question <laughs> answered go. for us. Um, that, that was easy. I well, like questions that are very easy to answer. We're underway for the second half. I wish more of my tests were like that. <laughs> Chicago House AC will take the kickoff and knock that one out of play. And a throw coming for Stumptown to begin the second half, looking to pick up right where they left off possession-wise here in the second stanza. Yeah, so this will be really interesting to see because now we have Kim on, 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 the, on the side that he's been on uh, throughout the match, but we have Morris on the, on the opposite side. So that might allow for a, a little bit more of a balanced attack from the, from the point of view of, of Chicago House, um, which, which might be something that could cause a little bit of problems for Stumptown. And an interesting note, actually, about the fullback on Morris's side now, left back Anthony Bowie. He's a converted midfielder who has goal scoring records to his name. He had six goals and three assists as a senior at Western Michigan in 2019. And he was a two time All Mac tournament team, also All Mac second team in 2019. So. A lot of pedigree there as they look ahead for Kozielek. The ball cut out there by Hines and a free kick coming for the boys in white. So we'll just have to see how maybe Bowie and Morris link up. Kim and Morris, there seemed to be a bit of a disconnect between the two, despite both of them having good individual moments. Yeah, uh, we talked about uh, Travis Ward and uh, Reese Williams, that, pe that partnership that they have. Um, and, you know, we, we can't, uh, with the Chicago being such a new club, there's that opportunity that, that they have just haven't had a lot of time together. Um, but it also allows them more opportunities to, to kind of figure things out. And the experimentation definitely seems to be uh, coming for, from, this, from this squad. McGrath a bit frustrated with the head official after they pull it back for an advantage, but Stumptown with a free kick through Stripling. And... You didn't like the, the, the location of the kick, I don't think. Yes. So now Bejarano Navia will play it to McGrath and get things back underway here 
in the 48th minute. It looks like the clock is synced up properly. We appreciate the viewers <laughs> who actually made us aware of what the clock read throughout the half. So we're glad to have everything squared away there. The ball played long, looking for Alex McGrath. Novotny com collects without too many problems. A theme of tonight, Mike Novotny cutting out crosses. And Sulia picked up a yellow at the end of the half for a pretty nasty-looking two-footed challenge on Williams. A little bit of a disconnected start to the to the half for both both squads. Um, it, it seems like they're still trying to. It's you know it's only been a couple of minutes, but neither team getting much of a control to get started here. <laughs> Yeah, and Robert, you bring up a good point there. Stumptown usually takes time. They usually take the first five minutes or so to really start firing the neurons and everything, co co you know, co connecting as things tend to do. Sometimes it takes longer. Today, they felt them out for a bit and then got it going. So we'll see if in the second... Maybe they can click things in a higher gear faster as that ball played through Frog. Wichunga gets ahead on it and rushes on to the end of it. Mike Novotny gets a set of gloves to it. Ball played back to Travis Ward now. Sizzling cross across the face of goal. No white shirts on the end to knock it home. But perhaps the most threatening chance of the night for Stumptown, Absolutely. Robert. Absolutely. What a, what a ball in by Colin Stripling to, to get that in. And a great run by uh, by Chunga and a... You know, a nice defensive play by by Novotny as well. So everybody did their job, um, and uh, Travis Ward unfortunately unable to get a a good clear uh, cross there, just kind of flung it across the the pitch. And when you have an expansion club like Chicago House, which has only technically played four matches, they played in the Nisa Independent Cup and finished second in their group, but together as a first team, they probably only really played a match and a half you figure the disconnect between the center backs will be relevant. Mishatovic and Sulia have had their bright moments throughout this match, but the fact is they haven't played together much, Robert. Yeah, and that will be something to watch on both ends. We, we already mentioned that uh, that Stumptown center back pairing is also in that same boat. It's not the same group that they used in the spring season, um, and so they have to, to figure each other out as well. So, you know, similar situation on both sides. Still a KG match here at the Stumplex. Nil-nil as we enter the 50th minute. Looking down the line is Bowie, finds Wojcik, who's had a pretty quiet night tonight. Lofts in across, looking for Smith at the back stick. Gonzalez cuts that one out with considerable aplomb and throws it forward to Reese Williams, perhaps Stumptown's best performer in the first half. For sure. Um, and, and you mentioned uh, Wojcik, the... the fact that he just hasn't been involved in the game I think uh, the job that Stumptown has done on the on the wingers uh, for for Chicago House has been the main reason for that he just hasn't had the service because uh, the defense on the on the outside for Stumptown has been so strong the wingers and the fullbacks I think I mean sometimes you say uh, the cliche the best defense the good attack but in this sense perhaps maybe Robert because Bowie and Kim are pinned so far back defensively, they can't launch the quick counters they want to. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, Bowie especially, we've barely seen him get forward at all, which, again, might explain uh, the reason for the change here um, that, that, that uh, Coach C.J. Brown made at halftime. We'll see if the flip-flopping of wings will start to reap rewards later in the half. Of course, as we mentioned, there have been bright moments on both sides, but neither side with the glaring opportunity. You had the free kick. It was a really impressive save, perhaps probably the most glaring. And Stumptown had the breakaway, but Chunga was forced wide and a decent save by Novotny. But neither side has really been able to launch that firecracker yet. We'll see if either team can do it here. Now Voidcheek comes deeper to claim. You see him just trying to force his involvement in this one now. And you see Bowie coming forward uh, really for the first time all match that, that I can remember. And you saw more more of this from him against Detroit. Uh, it, something about the Stumptown setup has not allowed him to, to do that tonight. Quick link up. That ball intercepted by Nemhard. Forward to Garcia Sosa. He's bundled over by Sulia already on a yellow. Yeah, got to watch out for that. Didn't look like that merits another card, but we'll get it talking to. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's probably on the you know one or two more of those of dangerous plays, and he's going to be in trouble. 
Chicago House AC still trying to figure out things defensively. Stumptown, on the other hand, perhaps trying to figure out things attacking-wise. Only scored eight goals in eight spring matches last year, but finished third in the spring table in large part due to their lockdown defense. Only four goals conceded, and I do not believe they allowed multiple goals in a single spring match. In this one... It makes for a nil-nil stalemate through 53 minutes. Morris plays it to Kafari, and now Sulia. Sometime with a light press. And an interception by Williams, and has space to run into. Great anticipation from Luis Williams there. And he's surging forward past Kafari. Ball launched wide to Garcia Sosa. And McGrath... Stumptown going to reset things. Bejarano Navia tries to switch the play over to Ward. And he manages to corral the ball in space. Linking quickly with Chunga. Hines drilling that one off of Bowie. And we've got a corner for the home side. As the drums start to reignite to life here in the Sportsplex at Matthews. It looks like they got a couple of changes coming for uh, the visitors. Yes, two changes on the way. David Abidor, the 28-year-old Creighton product, and Mateo Kidd, the St. Louis grad, who was all A-10 second team in 2019, are set to check in at the next dead ball. Garcia Sosa on the corner, headed clear by Wojcik. And Connor rushes into space. It's actually Seo and Kim. Now finding Connor. Hits the back of his foot. Stumptown going to play it back to Gonzalez, who outside of the free kicks had a pretty quiet night. Yeah, both goalkeepers haven't really had a whole lot to do. Um, we mentioned You mentioned the free kick, but also uh, the crosses that uh, Novotny has, has, has dealt with from, from Chicago's side, but not a whole lot other than that. McGrath drills it down the line for Ward. And tries to beat his defender on the near side. Ward's cross deflected. Winds up parrying off Novotny's gloves. And it's going to be ushered out for a Stumptown throw. The changes will be made now. Abidor and Kidd along the touchline. Again, good buildup from Stumptown here. Um, but just, just couldn't quite get to, to the final ball that you needed. And despite the, the fourth official not putting up his board, <clears throat> we, it looks like the subs will check in. Yeah, there's an injury on the, on the far side, it looks like. <clears throat> we can't quite have the vantage at who's down, but we will uh, let you know. Uh, looks like Mitrovic. Mijatovic. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> is down... In the defensive half, and two changes are made. Kidd and Abidor enter the fray. Sulia and Smith exiting. So Mateo Kidd going to operate in maybe that hybrid wing midfield role. He's very versatile. Uh, they like running him off ball into dangerous areas. And Abidor just going to be a like-for-like -like swap at center back with Sulia, who's on the yellow. Abidor did not play or make the bench on Saturday, but will make his season and Nisa debut tonight. Of course, the Creighton product was the first defender to sign with Chicago House, and he also played for Oakland Roots SC back in 2020, Robert. There we go. It's the place everybody needs to go, I suppose. And Abidor the, from Northbrook, Illinois, 6'1", 175 pounds. Pretty much replacement for the yellow-carded Sulia. Played ahead for Kozielik, and a throw coming for Chicago House. Able to escape traffic as Robert updates his board. <laughs> Got to be ready to know where everybody is as best I can. Absolutely. We appreciate that. It looks like Kozielik, according to Robert's board, is at center mid, and Kidd is playing along the right flank. Means he will be attacking Reese Williams, and they will still keep Morris headed towards Hines. No changes just yet for Stumptown and Robert. When do you think we can expect to see those? Well, I, I, we're getting close to that hour mark. That seems to be a good a good time 
uh, for those changes to be made. Um, I, I think it really depends on what happens in the next uh, couple of minutes as to when that will happen. I, I don't really see any signs of any uh, Stumptown players moving. Oh, there's some over there on the side, but they're not a lot. They don't seem to be like actively moving. So um, I, I definitely think, if anything, m maybe figuring out a way to uh, to add to the attack would be the way to go. And Abidor, with his first touch of the game, plays it forward to Bowie in a more advanced position. Now looking towards the back post. Mateo Kidd getting his first action as well, but Williams navigates that situation comfortably. And now Stripling. A bit more aggressive pressure from Chicago House. Kafari will just nod that one out of play, though. We're approaching the hour mark here at the Sportsplex at Matthews. Stumptown and Chicago House AC level at nil-nil here on 11 Sports. Sam Goldfarb and Robert Morrison alongside bringing the action tonight. And we're geared up for an intriguing final 30 minutes. There have been half chances either way. This hasn't been a slow mover. But neither side really able to find that cutting edge. Kid looks to change that. Ooh. And a miscommunication between Amposa and Gonzalez results in a corner. Oh, that could have been very bad. Um, thankfully, it just went out for a corner kick. Um, the bad things that could have happened would have been, uh, well, really bad. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, we're, we're fortunate both guys are all right. Of course, both, def both defensive pieces crucial for Stumptown. And Kevin Gonzalez, arguably one of the best goalkeepers in Nisa. Corner taken, looking for Mijatovic, but ultimately flies into the gloves of Gonzalez. There is a Chicago house player down around the penalty spot. That's good work by Gonzalez to keep that ball in play. Uh, it was definitely headed for the for the touchline for another <coughs> corner kick, and he, he did a great job of keeping keeping the ball in play. Let's see who's down here. The medic on hand for Chicago house. We don't quite have a visual on the man down yet, but we hope he's certainly okay. And he will be ushered up to his feet. And Robert, as we enter the final 30 here, what are the keys for both teams to really unlock this? Yeah, I think um, the balance that, that Chicago has found uh, in this second half, um, if anything, they've kind of shifted the the, their, the, the side that they've been attacking more frequently. Um, but you got to think that the introduction of Kidd on the, on the opposite side is the attempt to create some balance even more so. And I think that's, that's a key uh, element for sure. Um, but and so in their case, it's, it's about that balance and account and about the possession. Uh, moving forward um, for Stumptown again, it's uh, continuing to build on on the attack that they've made and, and, and make something happen in those moments. It looks like Mijatovic was the man down. He'll be temporarily on the sideline. He's being replaced by Michael Kafari at center back. He played defensive mid. They're just dropping him back temporarily down to 10 men are the visitors. Garcia Sosa slithers through traffic and heads it along to Chunga. A great recovery there by Mateo Kidd in defense. And it's going to roll out for a house throw. Chicago House being to, beginning to reassert itself after a quiet 20-ish minute spell that bridge both halves. Yeah, you mentioned the sort of pendulum of possession control that we've had throughout this match. Um, and it continues to swing as uh, it's on the Chicago House side now. We're entering the final 30 minutes of the match. Actually, we're well and truly in it. Stumptown and Chicago House both looking for that breakthrough. It's a crucial Nisa clash between these two sides who both dropped their first matches on the road. Stumptown, you have to figure, if they want to compete for the top half, these are the kind of matches they need to win. Yeah, you need to, to get points against teams that are um, like Chicago, you know, new to the league and and maybe the struggling sides, they, they can't afford to put themselves in situations where they're, they're losing points or, or not got getting points where they should have them. Ooh. Koziel like upended by Hines, and that's going to draw a yellow. Landed on his head for the moment, but he looks to be all right. 
And a free kick coming for Chicago House. It was a heavy tackle from, from Robert Hines. It didn't look particularly nefarious or anything from, from this angle, but um, yeah, definitely a lot of force behind it for sure. <clears throat> and he will draw just the yellow. Stump, or Chicago House with an opportunity to catch Stumptown out on this set piece. And Stumptown last season was more vulnerable at the set piece. We talked about no goals conceded from open play in all of spring. And one of, I believe, one or two of those, two of those, if I'm not mistaken, came from free kicks. Granted, they weren't particularly bad at defending crosses at all. Well, when you only give up four goals across the board, the defense is usually not a problem. You're not particularly bad at anything no, defensively. No, sure. <laughs> And they've cleared up their wing issue, their wing defensive issues, I'd say, tonight, at least as of the first 64 minutes. Granted, Hines did show flashes of struggles throughout that Chattanooga game, but if we said that around this time last game, we'd be eating our words. Yeah, for sure. Ball played over to McGrath, surges forward and looking for Ward, mm. a bit too heavy, and he threaded it pretty well uh, but behind Bowie. Botany close the distance. That's the right idea. Um, just, I mean, and it would have taken a, a, even a smaller pinpoint amount of accuracy. Um, had a good, uh, had the right idea again, but couldn't quite get it there. And when we talk about Stumptown generally, both going forward and defensively, we talk about the Heinz problems. Heinz has been a very solid defender for the Stumptown team the last two years. This, yeah. this is a one-off game, but you, you wonder if the trend would continue with him being played at right back because we haven't seen him at right back much. Bejarano Navia is knocked over by Kozielek, and the man who drew a yellow on Heinz two minutes ago will get one himself. <laughs> one good turn, I suppose. Um, I was actually gonna, I was actually noting as you, you're seeing. I don't know how visible this is on uh, the screens at home, but uh, Bejarano Navia's jersey is like still the whitest uh, on the field. Everybody else's is very wet looking, but his is for some reason very crisp still. And quite, quite surprising because Bejarano Navia is one to get a foot in. <laughs> you would think so. And now he's on the ground and it's still clean. I don't understand. Um, this Man, is this is what people came here for, is dry cleaning uh, <laughs> commentary, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Men use, what, was it like the extra strength detergent yeah, on his jersey? Maybe. Hines attacking down the right flank and has some space to run into. Now Travis Ward linking up with Garcia Sosa. Stumptown trying to reassert itself again. It's back and forth, and now they've, they're have gripping the possession for the time being. And an excellent reaction by Kafari to cut out that ball. Wojcik surges it ahead over to Kid. Oh, what a recovery there by Reese Williams. That was excellent. He came out of nowhere. Was just about to say, great recovery by Williams to dart back. Great minds, Robert. Uh, indeed. And Ward, looking for Chunga. He's playing on the back shoulder of Mijatovic. Challenge briefly cut out by Abador. Now over to Ward. We didn't see a flag up. Drilled across. It was cut out by Mijatovic once again. Stumptown looking for somebody across the face uh, of goal. Offside, it looked like. And the flag is finally up not by sure the sideline official. Not sure where that came from. Uh, it was difficult to see where the actual offsides call came from because it looked like everybody was good. I wonder if it was right there on Garcia Sosa right before he made the cross. Yeah, I was also wondering if we would have seen the flag on Chunga, but I, I you figure they wouldn't keep the flag yeah, down was, for that long. That was a very long time. And there is no VAR, so it's not like they're waiting for, <laughs> for uh, video uh, assistance there. Perhaps that's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> Granted, the rules have been adapted a little, so we'll see how that plays out uh, <laughs> this season. And Mijatovic going to build from the back. Now Kozielek to Bowie. Stumptown with a throw here as we enter the final 25 of play. And we met, briefly mentioned the history of Chicago House. 
a program, a team, a club founded in September of last year. They applied for NISA membership and were approved in November under CEO Peter Wilt, who also founded Forward Madison FC. So you're seeing some connections. A lot of these uh, Chicago House players have had stints with Forward Madison as Garcia Sosa's through ball is intercepted by Kafari, who has been quite quietly impressive tonight. As a defensive mid usually is. <laughs> yeah, the, again, just like with the center backs, if you're noticing the defensive midfielder in a lot of cases, that's that's generally a bad thing. Unless he surges throughout the fee, the pitch and wins every challenge. Absolutely. And, and where's the number seven for Chelsea? You probably won't hear his name much. <laughs> and Mijatovic once again. It's been kind of the quarterback of this buildup for House the last few minutes. And Abador, who's looked quite composed since entering the fray tonight. Forward to Wojcik. He's come deeper to claim increasingly, but loses out there to Chunga. Stumptown looking to launch a counter. They find War or McGrath, excuse me. And the play is called back for the foul committed yep. against Chunga or on Chunga. Got another yellow card here, it looks like. And it looked like when the ball came out of McGrath's feet, they came back to it. The yellow is going to Mijatovic, the second center back to be carded for Chicago House tonight. We got another injury, looks like. And it appears Morris is stretching out his legs. He was a pretty lively part of the first half, but we haven't called his name much here in the second. No, and you have to, again, you have to wonder if the the switch of sides for all the benefits that it might have had to balance the attack, um, if it might have messed with, with that uh, that partnership a little bit or, or just Morris feeling comfortable. Um, it's It seems like he was more more suited for the other the other side of the pitch, but um, to wonder about that comfort level for sure. Absolutely. It's a good point, but it is interesting as well, Robert, because when he whipped in that long 40-yarder to avoid cheek, I'm pretty sure he actually played on that side, yeah. but we don't know how he factored in the rest of the match. Yeah, and maybe that was his bright spot, whereas obviously you're right to observe that he was so much more lively in the first on that other side. Trying to figure out who this is on the side that's getting looked at as well. Another Chicago House player it looks to be Abidor. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe you're correct. Long ball for Ward. And McGrath drills that one low. It's still bouncing around. Whoa. Novotny has an awkward <laughs> time dealing with it and has to pound it with a full hand above the post. Whoa, that was uh, that could have gotten real awkward. Um, it was pretty awkward as it was. Didn't look like uh, Novotny knew much about it. It really wasn't for a long time. It didn't even seem like he wanted to do anything about it and then suddenly realized that he had to do something or else uh, one of the Stumptown uh, players was gonna was gonna put that one in the back of the net. So good recovery there, but wasn't wasn't pretty by any stretch of the imagination. It seemed like a late reaction by everybody on the part of the house defense. And you wonder if your Novotny do come to claim that earlier. Yeah, you you, you definitely think that he would want to take take advantage of that opportunity and really take over the situation rather than leaving it to the chance like that. Garcia Sosa looking for the back post. Foul committed in the box. We're going the other way. And we've got a few more changes on along the touchline, as Roberts pointed out here. Damon Almazan alongside Philip Lewis Bennett, the second. <laughs> Almazan's actually 19 years old, and he's got quite an interesting story that we'll go into when he enters the pitch. And Robert, how do you feel these changes unlock the game for Chicago House. I know we're talking about that word a lot. And then also, what about the lack of changes from Stumptown? Oh, well, the lack of changes is very interesting, as we actually have one coming up here for Stumptown, as you say it. Um, but it looks, generally speaking, like uh, Chicago's changes have been like for like. Um, you see Almazon coming on for Morris, which is a, a generally like for like movement. Um, but it doesn't seem like it's necessarily so much as unlocking anything as it is just, you know, taking care of, of some heavy legs. Excellent point, Robert. And also, I believe, it, is that, that might be... That's uh, Folson, I believe. Yes, yes. Uh, Forson's on Forson, for some time. Yes. But 
But I believe that Mijatovic might have exited for Bennett, and they dropped Kafari back to center back. Interesting. So Teddy Forsen entering for Stumptown. We talked about him a little bit. He is the lone out-and-out -out forward Stumptown signed to replace the outgoing three this offseason. He's 5'9". He's quick, and he could be a big impact. He had four starts in nine appearances his senior year at Iona. Scored two goals in most of his seasons. That ball looking for Forsen, and it's going to be knocked out of play. Meanwhile, when we talk about Amazon, we mentioned an intriguing, interesting story. He's turned down multiple pro contracts in his young career already. So Chicago House signing a very young, exciting midfielder. He's just 19 years of age. He's not physically imposing, 5'4", 135, <laughs> but he is very skilled. He scored 14 goals and had seven assists in 13 matches his senior year of high school, set the season single season record for goals in high school. And he also trained with Tigres in Mexico in Liga MX, turned down a pro contract to go to college, played a year at IPFW, and then also turned down a second tier Gibraltar team's contract as well. And now he's at Chicago House. He's from the Chicago area. And he's looking to make an impact with his first pro team at home. you got to respect the journey, and I'm sure it's going to be an exciting opportunity for him in his first professional appearance. Yeah, you got to respect that for sure, This the, the opportunity to want to wanna, to do what he thinks is, is best for his career. And, you know, maybe it, it might be a, a, a lower level league here in the United States, but at least he gets to play for the home team, right? Yes, and he's also turned down other opportunities to play at home. And I mean, I know the Chicago faithful at SeatGeek Stadium are going to love him when he comes to play in his first home match next week. Meanwhile, Lewis Bennett also enters. He was actually all Big East first team in 2014 with Marquette and second team in 2015. He looks like a, a proper English defensive midfielder, doesn't he? <laughs> that bald head and everything. Just... <laughs> John Joe Shelby. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly where I was going with that. Yep. See, I was going to say uh, uh, there's St Charlie Adam, but Charlie Adam has hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And now coming down the near side is Drew Connor, finds it to Bennett. He's a hybrid midfielder defender, not known for goal scoring, and he's going to be that defensive mid today as they drop Kafari back to center back. There's a, a we talked about Stumptown's fluidity with their midfielders and 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 uh, forwards. There seems to be a lot of that going on with Chicago as well. You're not seeing any of the 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 sort of uh, group of of kid and Connor and uh, Kozilek and and now Almazon staying on one side or in one sort of wing or or, or middle position. Uh, they're kind of moving at, around and in some sense of of uh, plan planned out kind of thought, but for the most part, they're not sticking to one place. Another substitute coming for Stumptown. We talked about how they hadn't made any. They've just made two in quick succession. Julio Rubio entering for Luis Garcia Sosa. Garcia Sosa had his bright spots, perhaps maybe not as quite as involved as he was in the 48 minutes against Chattanooga, but was getting involved with Ward and McGrath, and they'll just certainly be glad to have him back and healthy. Yeah, absolutely. He um, he seemed to make more of a of an impact during the the first half. Kind of kind of fell fell away during that second the second part of of the the match. And meanwhile, Julio Rubio, five nine midfielder, he actually joins from Nisa, runners up L A Force. He actually featured against Stumptown in that match back May twelfth. So we've seen him play. And now playing for the home side here at the Stumplex. And again, another like-for-like like movement, uh, trying to, to unlock something with, by getting uh, a new player in, this, in those spots. You have to think from, from both sides. Maybe you wonder, is Rubio perhaps the support to allow Ward and McGrath to go further forward? Uh, maybe. There's got to be some idea at this point to, to, get, to, get, to unlock this, this scoring thing. We've talked about it a lot. Um, like who's going to find the way to do that. And it, it doesn't seem like anybody really has the, 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 the exact right idea. Um, but the, you can't 
can't say the coaches are not are not trying. And another interesting change as well. It appears Stumptown's gone at two up top with Forsen and Ward. Meanwhile, Rubio operating on the near side flank. Ward trying to link up with him just then. Bejarano Navia knocks it off his own face. <laughs> and Almazan battling ferociously with Hines for it. Now Rubio searching for force in the new signing. Ball played a little too far outside him around Kafari. Stumptown recycling possession once again. And Williams. Forced back by Kidd. And we enter the 78th minute. Score still level at nil-nil. Same scoreline, actually, that was in Stumptown's final home match against Michigan Stars on June 25th. Yeah, I haven't seen a goal here at the Stumplex uh, in a while. Since May 12th, yeah. it seems. <laughs> that was a, I believe, 12-minute free kick that allowed Christian Chaney to notch his first Nisa goal. He had just recently signed with LA Force. And nice. if you've been following Nisa, Christian Chaney was the leading goal scorer last season, and he got off on the right foot again last weekend so some might say and the rest is history <laughs> so far so good um i'm sure stumptown would like to break the uh whatever it is that's causing the problem that isn't allowing them to score here that was right at the goalkeeper that was not much of a of a free kick there from bennett bennett fizzed one but not really troubling gonzalez looked a bit flashier than perhaps it was <laughs> a lot of speed but not much accuracy He's been lively all over the field in the five minutes since he's entered. As you would expect from a substitute. That's right. Fresh legs. That's what those are for, right? Ball played back from Abidor to Novotny. Chicago House has had the ball a lot, but it's been in their own half the last couple minutes. And a free kick coming for Robert Hines as we approach the final 10 and change. So looking at Stumptown right now on Robert's board, Julio Rubio operating in a cam roll with Ward and McGrath outside him. And meanwhile, Connor has been pushed further inside as Amazon and Kid take up the wing spots. Seen and a, a lot more uh, forward thinking from Robert Hines this half. He's been a lot more progressive in that in that fullback role. Speaking of progressive, Bejarano Navia also surging upfield, finds Williams on the opposite side. Stumptown chasing it a bit more, as Roberts alluded to. And recycled once again from Bejarano Navia as the cross is cleared. Now to Hines, finds Rubio in the pocket. Carried away by Connor. Free kick blown up against Bejarano Navia. And what do you make of that, Robert, when you see guys like Bejarano Navia and Hines just in more advanced spots? It, it, I mean, it seems to me like they're trying to find ways to find that goal, right? I mean, it ha what they've been doing has not been working. It's not been effective. And so, you know, you find other players who might be able to, to push forward and, and create opportunities. And they maybe hope that Forsen is the guy there as well. But we'll just have to see how this all lines. They don't really have a true hold-up man, as we've kind of hit on this broadcast. A few times. But they have a lot of talent, and that's the question. How can they collect that and form a side that gets its goals out from midfield? They did that last year. Can they do it again? It's asking a lot of, of a certain group of players, and as we've seen so far through almost two matches, um, it it's it's... It's a lot. I mean, the, Ward has has been asked a lot of him, has been asked of him. Um, a great deal has been asked of McGrath. And while they've produced creativity, um, it's to a certain extent there's there's a certain amount of luck involved in, in goal scoring. Um, if you if 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 you get the the creativity right, and sometimes it's just about finding the right person at the right time. And so far, they haven't been able to do that. Bennett plays that one ahead to Almazan. It's knocked off and Posa for a Chicago house throw. The first time they've had the ball in Stumptown's half in the last five minutes, despite possessing it for the bulk of that time. Which side can 
break this open here in the final 10 minutes. Stumptown AC and Chicago House AC level at nil-nil here in match week two of NISA play. One of these sides trying to bag their first three points of the year. As of now, both teams set for their first points. And you see Stumptown chasing this a bit more ag aggressively, it seems. As Robert mentioned, pushing the likes of Behran and Navi and Hines further ahead. They bring Forsen on, Rubio in, a lot of adjustments. They're just trying to see what combo works. And Williams looking for Forsen. The ball is loose. Teddy Forsen battling with... <laughs> That's a good effort there from Forsen, but uh, that was a much larger man than he was taking on. Yeah, um, and it appears there is a man down in Chicago House's defensive box. It was good effort from Forsen, that, nonetheless. That was. Um, kind of a fortuitous bounce, but you know you got to take the opportunities when they come, for sure. Um, and that was Bowie. Yeah, it's a Bowie. I was trying to figure that out who's down. It appears Bowie was forced to track over as well. Of course, there is a totally new center back duo on the field. Abidor and Kafari making it up, despite them starting with Sulia and Mijatovic. Yeah, very interesting. You don't often see center back uh, substitutions unless there's an absolute need for it, uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, be it injuries or, or something along those lines. But you, you tend to, to try to leave that pairing alone as much as humanly possible. So it's an interesting move from Chicago's point of view. Bennett. Navigating traffic, plays it back to Kafari, who loses the ball temporarily. Alex McGrath in space. And now Ward trying to find a shot, and it's blocked and cleared quite impressively by Bennett and Abador. That's just a good example of, of what Stumptown has been struggling with all throughout the game. But the ball's loose once oh. again. Julio Rubio. Tries to curl it to the top left and just misses the target. That would not just the way. I'd talk about how the, we got the microcosm of the whole game with them getting very close and not quite getting a chance. And then Rubio almost made me look funny as I was saying it. But good effort there. One of the closest opportunities Stumptown's had tonight. Rubio pounced on it. You see them pressing more aggressively too, Robert. Yeah, you have to. I mean, this is the time, right? We got, what, five minutes and whatever stoppage time left. Um, it's time to go after it and... And, and really press after and force uh, Chicago to, to make decisions that and maybe force them into an error uh, that might lead to a goal. We will see if that pays off for Stumptown or maybe even comes back to bite them as Chicago House trying desperately to play out of their own half. Instead, we'll launch it out of play. Reese Williams will have a throw for Stumptown. We talked about how lively and adventurous he was in the first. He's had his moments in the second, but been a bit quieter. Yeah, quite a bit quieter as, as he's <laughs> see almost again uh, connects with uh, McGrath there, who seems to be coming on over the last couple of minutes as well um, after a, a relatively quiet start to this half as, uh, as well. And now looking down the line for Mateo Kidd, the 23-year-old St. Louis product, tries to establish some house possession. Almazan, the native, Chicago native, can't quite steer it on target. Yep, we got two balls on the field. That's never good. Gonzalez in a hurry. Yeah, they don't want to waste any precious time here as we approach the final five and change. The fans still making noise. We don't know where they, it appears they moved to the other side of the field. Well, that's good. It should be where, that, that's a nice opportunity. You don't get up to get the chance to do that in most places. Just trying to impact the game in whatever way possible, bringing drums in the building, turning this place to a bit, a bit lively after the lightning delay that kind of cleared some people out as well. And Ward Ugh. can't quite find Rubio. A good recovery by Abador, but McGrath two foots it loose. Travis Ward. Looking for what looked to be McGrath and is now knocked over just outside the penalty area. A yellow coming for what looks to be Lewis Bennett the second. Um thought it was Connor, I think. It is Connor. Good yeah. shout, Robert. Connor and Bennett were both in on it for the <laughs> yeah. challenge. He came flying in out of nowhere. 
Um, speaking of flying in out of nowhere, that tackle by by Travis Ward to set up that that uh, build up was was excellent. He is he is quite actually t a, a two sided player in the in the truest sense of the word. Very good moving forward, but also puts in a, a good stick of a tackle when he needs to. And he's really put that on display tonight as they look for the free kick, winning that actually that free kick moments ago. And you just see team player both teams perhaps being more aggressive. It's all popping off here in the closing stages as one team looks to break through. Stumptown looks the more likely of the two sides. But can they flip the narrative? We will see. It's been very promising from the home side, but nothing concrete just yet. Rubio dinks it. Looking at the back post, Novotny lets it roll out of play and a goal kick as we enter the 89th. It was a good idea. Um, you can see Travis Ward sort of sneaking towards the uh, the line that the Chicago House was building. Didn't quite come off. Um, the, the ball could have been a little bit um, better placed from Rubio, but the, the idea was definitely there. And it looks like we have one more change. Derek Huffman going to enter for Andrew Connor, who just picked up the yellow. I guess they're playing it safe here. Huffman, we talk about two-sided players. He is definitely one of them. He actually scored a hat trick in uh, Chicago House's 5-0 win over Union Dubuque on July 31st. He scored a hat trick in 23 minutes. And he also starred in the Major Arena Soccer League. I believe had 20-plus goals and also was one of the best defenders in the league as well. It looks like he's over on that, uh, that wing at the moment. Mateo Kidd has moved on the inside. Again, a lot of movement from these, uh, these midfielders from Chicago House for sure. It's been very free on both sides in terms of positioning, but I'd say especially with the house, which usually when you see Stumptown, you see those wingers just flip-flopping and rotating and drifting, but now you see the house being a bit more relaxed with that. Trying to confuse Stumptown, that ball played into uh. Roy Cheek! And in the 90th minute, Chicago House gets the breakthrough. Well, you talked about Huffman, and he makes an immediate impact um, with the cross in. And that was one thing that they haven't been able to do all game long is uh, get that service into Wojcik. And uh, immediately Huffman comes in and uh, flings it in there, and bam. Phenomenal link up. And the second goal of the year for Wojcik Wojcik, the Polish-American striker who's played all over the globe. He's made his mark in all different levels of the American soccer pyramid and grabs his second in as many matches. And it was between the pairing of Nemhard and Amposa once again. Stumptown looking to respond quickly and Travis Ward wins one right on the edge of the area. There's a yellow given to what looks to be Bowie. Whew, that was very, very close. And they're going to say it's just outside the area. Yeah, that, I, I would. We, uh, we, I wish we had a replay on that on yeah, the board. I'm not sure where the actual foul occurred. It was very close um, for sure. But it's, I mean, that ball is on the line. <laughs> Rubio literally taking this free kick on the touchline right on the edge of the penalty area and Stumptown chasing an equalizer as we enter added time. The fans getting loud. Stumptown AC looking to salvage a point after having a promising display all night. Wojcik, Wojcik broke the deadlock just moments ago. Stumptown hit back with Ward winning this free kick. Rubio stands over it, drilled to the back stick, and it's cleared out of play for what should be a Stumptown throw. It's not gone just yet. And finding McGrath on the far side, battling for it, and ushered I was going to say out of trouble, but won back by Behran Onavia and Stripling. Once again, McGrath drilling, looking for Forsen. 
Ball loose in the area. Strickling! And it's headed over by David Abador. A lot of activity in the box there. It's um, getting a little bit uh, nervy from uh, from the perspective of, of Chicago. Um, I, I, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of bodies flying around and um, getting a little dangerous there. McGrath stands over the corner kick on the far side. What can he do with this in swinger? It goes over everyone's head. Rubio can't get on the end of it. It's launched out of play by Wojcik. Kevin Gonzalez is out of goal as well. Stumptown throwing literally everybody forward as they chase an equalizer. Hines, long throw. Flicked on, looking for Forsen. And it's going to roll out of play. And I believe we've got a goal kick as we are deep in added time. The referee surely checking his watch. Stumptown AC falling behind 1-0 in the 90th. Wojciech Wojcik with the incredible flick on header into the bottom left corner on a phenomenal glazing ball from Derek Huffman, the substitute. Yeah, talk about making an impact immediately. Um, you don't often get a chance to do that as a substitute, but Huffman certainly did. Launch long for Amazon Hines trying to find a man in white. And Wojcik holds up. Now to Almazan. Chicago House with the ball in space. The 19-year-old looking to perhaps nail this match into the ground. And that one, a really curling, dipping shot is saved by Gonzalez as he clears it. McGrath trying to rush on to the end of it. The ball being pinged around at the moment. Kid controls. And Almazan tries to rush out of trouble. McGrath wins it back. Stumptown perhaps with one last attack as they win a free kick through Alex McGrath around the center of the park. And we keep saying it feels like the last opportunity. This genuinely does. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. Kevin Gonzalez plays it over to Bejarano Navia. It's looping toward the near post, cleared out of play. And that is going to do it. Chicago House AC has stunned the Stumplex. A 1-0 victory backed by the 90th minute winner from Wojciech Wojcik. His second goal of the year. He scored the opener in Detroit last weekend and bags the opener in Matthews and the winner tonight. Wow. I mean, that is just, that's the type of game that you just absolutely hate to be on the losing. I mean, obviously you hate to lose every game, but a game that is so tight um, that neither team is able to get a real handle on for basically 90 minutes. And then to have a, a substitute come off the bench, touch the ball the first time and whip in across, and suddenly you're down 1-0 one, one with minutes to play um, after all those opportunities. And I think if you're stumped down, you're going to look back at all the opportunities that they had throughout the match where you know they got very close where they got the ball into the box but their shot wasn't didn't have enough power or wasn't didn't have enough placement i think you're going to look back at the, and say we have to figure out how to finish because the finishing and the lack of finishing that we've seen so far from this team is re is really killing them um through two matches so far and robert how do you think they can adjust things with the personnel they have I, I, I don't know. It might be a, a different uh, sort of perspective on it. Uh, the, this whole whipping it out from the whipping crosses in from the from the wings is probably going to be a tougher way to go about this, um, given the personnel that they have. So I think they're going to want to uh, to figure out another way uh, to do it. Maybe that's playing a little bit more centrally. Um, I don't know, but um, they're going to have to come up with some solutions moving forward or this is going to be a, a, a long, tough season for Stumptown AC. Robert hits the nail on the head, and it's a very disappointing defeat. Nonetheless, for Stumptown, who dropped their second consecutive match, and we talked about how they maybe surprised some folks last season with how well they performed. They're going to be have their backs against the wall as they head to Michigan in a very winnable game against Michigan Stars FC at 3.30 next Saturday. And then they'll take on Cal United Strikers at home here on August 28th. Meanwhile, Chicago House goes home for their opener next weekend. Robert, 
for Robert Morrison and Sam Goldfarb and Full Scale Production. We'd like to shout out Jake, Glenn, and Alex for helping us out tonight. That's going to do it here at the Sportsplex at Matthews, where Chicago House AC defeats Stumptown 1-0. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and have a good night.